All right, so as I was saying, it's all about the family. So when you're not in the dungeons, you'll be in the house. And you can see all the family members doing their own stuff right now. This is the father. You'll see word bubbles above their heads sometimes. And that's uh, all dynamically linked to the actions in the dungeons. So if you come across a caravan of people and you save them, people are going to be happy. If you don't save them, they're going to be sad, right? These also serve as an organic reminder to like stuff you can be doing. So like, let's say you failed that, that quest. Well, eventually it'll start popping back up in the world again. And you'll see like, like the eldest daughter will be like, man, I wish we should go check on that family and see if they're okay. So instead of having like a quest list, we kind of let the family remind you that the stuff's still uh, happening in the world. Okay. Uh, interesting enough, earlier someone saved this wolf cub. Yeah. So they brought it back to the house and now we've been uh, tasked with like finding herbs for it to like nurse it back to health. But it becomes a permanent picture of the house and opens up like new uh, ambient animations whenever you return. Okay. Uh, but yeah, let's just we'll just jump right into it. I think we'll just see what characters we're playing. So right now we just have two characters strictly for the demo, but on launch the whole family will be available. And how many? Uh, six. Six. Okay. Yeah. So right now you're playing Lucy. All right. uh, so you can move with the left and then. Styrofoam from the packaging is still like... Procedural styrofoam. Yeah, 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 man. <laughs> it's all part of the experience. Uh, anyways, so you can use the right analog stick and you just point in a direction and hold it and you'll oh, shoot fireballs. All right. You can use X, but I don't recommend that with ma uh, range characters. It's more, right. the, the analog's better for them. Uh, y will drop a tornado for you. And then uh, left shoulder button will drop a clone and that'll distract enemies. Uh, and so that way you can be safe for a while. So each character's got like two stances, like two ability sets, right? So for me, you know, I drop the swords, right? That's sweet. But when I hold up my shield, that immediately becomes shield attacks, right? So each character's got two stances, and the, the, the way you reach that second stance, though, is unique to each character based on their personality. So as the father, I'm the guardian. So the idea is like holding up your shield kind of unlocks all your guardian abilities. But as Lucy, you're a fire mage, so you're, you're younger, you're brash, right? So as you attack enemies, you'll start to see fireballs appear above your head. And when all three of those are fully, uh, fully inflamed, you'll enter rage mode, where you can move and shoot at the same time, and you'll have super abilities for a little bit. Okay. So that's the idea there. But, oh, so yeah, we'll just start it out. So as I said, procedurally generated. It's going to be different every time. Uh, right here we have a shrine or an obelisk, which grants us like a temporary buff. So similar to like Diablo, how they kind of do that. that right yeah. Rage mode, man. You can move and shoot at the same time now for a bit. Uh, yeah, so he just reached that there. That's one of those unique uh, environmental traps I was kind of talking about. If you happen to clip it, let's see if I can do it without the spikes hitting me. Yeah, it'll explode. So that and damage. That'll disable it. No. No. So it'll just regret. So the spikes are just there right now. Those will always be there. But what's great about that is it damages you, but also enemies. So you're playing a ranged character, you kite some enemies in there, that can be nice. Come on, man. <laughs> yeah, so there's another one, yeah, right? So here's a big chest, but we need a soul in order to open it, and that's like a temporary currency that we get from enemies occasionally. And you get it for just the one dungeon run. Oh, go for it. Oh, yeah. So what you might start seeing eventually, especially if we backtrack a little bit, is uh, so that corruption I was talking about has actually corrupted all these creatures. And so like this, this is pure corruption right here, but it's actually seeped into the, creep, the monsters. So occasionally when you backtrack, you'll actually see the tar seep out of the corpses of the enemies you've killed. Okay and they'll form new monsters for you to fight. So the idea being, oh wow, we got lightsaber guy. Oh, yeah, that's intense, coming around the corner. <laughs> um, so the idea is that backtracking will never be 100% safe, is the idea. You should always be a little on your toes. Now why would you want to backtrack? Because occasionally there might be a dead end, or you might want to like explore more of the dungeon before you want to like, uh, but you'll never, there'll never be like a, oh, if you go back to the beginning, like there'll never be a quest that like tells you to backtrack. Okay. 
Here's another one of those shrines. So now we got, we can move a bit faster. Oh, no soul. So I, I gotta ask, um, is the gold shared or is the person picking it up the only one getting it? It's shared between, okay. yeah. I didn't know how Gauntlet Legends you were getting about. No, no, like yeah. That. Yeah, no, we, we kept the competitive nature out of it. Okay. As much as I loved that part. Yeah. But imagine it, it's less your gold and more the house gold. Right. Essentially. That makes sense. Because you'll take it back and you'll use it at the house. Right. To upgrade the family is like a hole, essentially. So, so yeah. You, you got a wing over your head right now. So we, we activated an agility obelisk earlier. Okay. So we basically have like, suit, like increased speed for a bit. Oh wow, okay. Cool, one dropped. Once we kill these enemies, I want to show you what that thing is over there. Oh. Of course, more keep coming. Okay, all right. All right, backtrack. Forget, leave them. Okay, so this is a rune stone. So if you if you press B on that real fast, you'll you'll pick it up. So this one's a this one's an upgrade. So it applied to your decoy. So now it'll be able to take more damage before disappearing. So that, that's a simple upgrade. Maybe it could, oh, wow. All right, let's deal with this. Um, cool. Oh, I haven't been using my tornado. What is a tornado? Do? It'll be Y. Yeah, but what is it? What, oh, like, what's the... it, just, it just causes random damage right now. Okay. Uh, now if you press B on that again. So you just picked up a, another rune for that same ability, so it dropped your old one. And this one's kind of cooler because this will cause fire damage on people that attack it now. So that's not necessarily going to change the way you use the ability. It's still going to be pretty similar, but with a nice perk to it. But sometimes these rune stones could change the way you actually want to use the ability. So if you take the archer character, she shoots one arrow. She's great against one enemy, but if a crowd hits her, she's in trouble. There's one rune stone that splits her arrow into three shots, and she immediately becomes a crowd control character. So you're going to want to play a lot more aggressive with her. We're playing multiplayer. I can go pick you up now. So those seals were damaging me over time. Yeah. Just a second. Yep. Is everything okay over here? Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I just want to make sure nothing crashed. No, no, no. Okay. You saved the puppy. It was super excited. Yeah. You you bring it back to the house, then you nurse it back to health, and you build a doghouse for it, and it becomes like a permanent fixture, and the whole family will interact with it. And the final build, yeah, they're all a family essentially. So like you, you're like right now we have the father and the youngest daughter. Okay. But yeah, you'll be able to play with all of them in the final release. Okay. Oops. Oh no. <laughs> Let me pick you back up. I tried to be the hero. It's all good, man. Oh no. Oh no. Yeah, so we got a couple monsters in here that are summoning more monsters. Oh, okay. This, this might be it. Yeah. But that's not a problem because the whole idea is that now we go home, we take all the experience we gained, and we level up. Okay. Uh, so just experience? You'll take experience and gold, uh, and that's it. So, like, the souls that we found, we lose those. The rune stones, we lose those. Uh, but, like, if we... Um, here, I'll just go here. So each character's got their own unique skill tree, so you'll always be able to, like feel like you're expanding your character. Okay. The idea. But yeah, that's uh All right, that's it's pretty, cool. it's pretty much more to uh, Yeah, we got three fully procedurally generated dungeons each. So we got the caves, we have the forest or the uh, desert, and then we have this like it started off as like a lava city, but it turned into like a like take a steampunk city but swap everything with lava. So it's like this lava, like lava punk. punk. Yeah, okay. yeah. And what's cool about that is that there's a narrative theme to each chapter, right? That world building I was talking about. Okay. My favorite one is the lava punk world where essentially all the citizens learned how to augment their bodies with machine parts to live forever. But with the corruption coming through, it's starting to, to uh, you know, corrode all their machines. 
So for the first time in like 100, 100, 200 years, you're facing death. So you, all your missions are actually gonna be more uh, geared towards helping someone cope with death. So it's not, it's not so much about killing things, it's more about trying to like help them pass on. So it mixes it up a little exactly. bit. Exactly. So each chapter's got its own theme and we try to like push that.